hello everybody welcome back to another reading vlog i am so excited today is october 1st and if you did not see the all my horror books on my tbr video i'll link that for you guys down here and up here i am starting all my horror books this month i'm so excited i'm gonna try and read as many horror books as i can this is gonna be a month long reading vlog and I just finished my last book last night because I rushed. I crammed to finish it. To be fair, it was a very good book. So I was like very happy to be reading it because I knew that it's today, starting October 1st, we're starting on my horror books. And I'm starting with Incidents Around the House by Josh Mallerman. After I posted that horror books TBR, the first comment I got from a channel member, thank you, bless you, you need to read Incidents Around the House. And I knew it i knew it i'm so excited i everything every review that i've seen except for maybe like one has given this four stars and above i'm so excited for this book in january i read daphne by josh mallerman and this novel has stuck with me because i feel like the entity of daphne was really scary and spooky and i quite enjoyed it so i'm really looking forward to this one i'm starting this one today and let's see how many of my horror books i can get through this month i'm really hoping at minimum eight at max is it too much to say 12 i would love to read 12 this month and i have so many if you haven't seen my horror books tbr go check that video out and comment which one i should read next but we're starting with incidents around the house by josh mallerman and i'm so excited hi guys it's october 2nd don't expect me in this vlog to check in every day i read it all of this yesterday that is the first time i have ever since probably like a kid read like a chapter book in one day i finished incidents around the house by josh mallerman instant five stars i don't know if i gave it a five stars because i read it all in one day and i devoured it because i do have a few gripes with it but this was so good i feel like we're off to such a good start um I loved this. So in this book, we're reading from the point of view of an eight-year-old named Bella, and that's my first gripe, is that we're reading from her point of view, but as someone who currently has a nine-year-old and a five-year-old, I feel like Bella, I don't know if maybe just she's portrayed to be a little bit more innocent, but my nine-year-old, when she was eight, didn't talk this babyish. She talks kind of to me like a four or five year old, which I feel like if she would have been labeled as a four or five year old, it kind of would have made it a little bit creepier. So that's my like first gripe is that she's considered an eight year old. She's too innocent to be an eight year old. There's just no way. But you're following from her point of view where she essentially is being kind of like not possessed, but she's being stalked by this entity called other mommy and the descriptions of other mommy are pretty scary um they're pretty spooky i could envision them so so well and the other mommy is constantly just asking her like can i go in your heart and when i first started reading this i was like oh this is just gonna be like bella's the only one that sees this that like is having to deal with this but no like Almost everyone in this story that is involved eventually ends up seeing this like entity and I thought that was a really cool kind of twist because I liked that the parents and like the grandma and some like family friends also were kind of like in on this that this entity just wants to possess Bella so we're following that kind of like them trying to figure it out in like a very scatterbrained running away but realizing it can follow them kind of way and then trying to fight it and then the ending was just like crazy i had such a good time with this i think the reason that most people including myself were able to read this so quickly is because it's mostly just dialogue like the chapters are super short but like the pages just like look like this like it's mostly just dialogue and conversation based so it's a really really quick read and I really did like this. I will say I read this obviously all day yesterday and I did find it to be spooky, but I didn't feel like I was necessarily scared on the like one to 10 scare chart. I would say I was probably at like a four or five. The descriptions of the other mommy were definitely pretty spooky. But last night while I was asleep, I do this thing, I toss and turn all night and I woke up and I, I'm like direct in line vision of my closet. And I felt like I was the, uh, 
I just kept thinking like if this if this door creaks open right now I don't know what I'm gonna do I was like the Will Ferrell thing where he's like I'm so fucking scared right now I was so scared last night I was like the descriptions of other mommy were so scary so I really liked this um five stars I'm glad we started this off with a bang knocked a book out in one day do I recommend this? 100%. I think if you've read, well, anything by Josh Mallerman, I definitely think you should pick this up. Oh, if you've read Hidden Pictures by Jason Rucklack, I feel like this kind of go gives like the same vibes. It's probably a little bit spookier um, because that one's like a whole different thing. But I would recommend this if you've read that book and you enjoyed it. I think this is a good book for you. Now, moving on, I did start another book last night and I do plan on reading more of this today. The next book I planned on picking up was Mr. Magic. This is by Kirsten White. Again, I went through the comments on that horror video and this was like another one that was commented about and it's on the shorter side and I was like, I really want to read this because there's a few books by Kirsten White that are kind of on my radar, but I kind of want to get a feel for her writing and see if I enjoy it before I pick anything else up. So far, I am enjoying this. I just started chapter four. I'm on page 42 and it seems like as of right now, what is happening is we're following from Val's point of view and Val works on this like farm and she has no memories past the age of eight or I guess before the age of eight when her dad brought her to this farm and they just kind of have hit out there. But then her dad passes away and the lady that owns the farm posts about it on like facebook because val and her dad had been like super secretive and Val's like why would you post that because like they've been so secretive and then a couple of people show up that are there for the funeral but are also there to see val and to i feel like bring her to this mr magic reunion because val was one of the kids in the like circle of friends because they're having a reunion and apparently the way this ended was really bizarre and weird. It's almost like a Mandela effect. Like the people that watch the show were like, yeah, I remember Mr. Magic being a puppet or I remember Mr. Magic having no face. But then all of a sudden, like they're like, oh, and I remember it ended with a fire. or I remember it just ended and that's it. And there's like a bunch of like Reddit threads and people that are just so obsessed with this show. So they're doing like a 30 year reunion. So these guys come to get Val and it's very like, chill like Val goes with them no problem but she doesn't know really anything she has no recollection of anything and where I just ended off like basically I think they went to the funeral to collect her and they were gonna bring her regardless if she wanted to go or not because I think she might be the reason that the show ended somehow I don't know I'm interested to see what happens I'm interested to follow it in between each chapter we're getting like Wikipedia articles emails between castmates and it's kind of fun it's a little mixed media it's not like super mixed media but i am going to keep digging into this one will i finish it today now but i am excited to just jump into this one again another short horror i love the cover and it's just been kind of nice to like keep reading so i'm diving into this one next and so far i'm enjoying it and it looks like it's blurbed here by melissa albert and i love melissa albert that's the only other author i recognize I'm excited. Let's keep reading Mr. Magic. Okay. We're here with an update. Today is October 4th. So thankfully I'm not updating you every day. So I figured because I'm not doing a what I read in October video, this is the what I read in October video. I would quickly mention another book that I started back in September, but it is a horror book, thankfully, and I'll talk about it now. I did get an early release of the new Grady Hendrix, which is Witchcraft for Wayward Girls. It takes me a bit to read early releases because I get them digitally and I'm not always wanting to read on my phone, but I will say I ended up giving this four stars. I think out of all of the Grady Hendrix that I've read, this is definitely in my top three with My Best Friend's Exorcism and The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. I really liked this and I feel like it's coming out in January. I'm going to be picking up a physical copy because I need to also own this physically. It's really, really good. So if you're looking for another horror book to add, I would absolutely suggest this one. In this one, we're following Fern and she goes to this school in Florida. This is set back in like the 1950s or no, I think it's the 70s. I think it is the 70s. This is this school in Florida called the Wayward, Wellwood Wayward Girls Home for girls that are under the age of 18 that are unwed and are pregnant. So she's there with a bunch of young girls who are all pregnant and I think I was kind of hooked from the get-go because the descriptions 
were really good. Like the descriptions of everything was really great. You got to know the characters really quickly and the house and like the routine that they're put in while they're all waiting to give birth and then they're basically shipped back to their homes. So in this book, like I said, you're following Fern and she gets to know a few girls and they decide that, you know, their backstories or at least one of their backstories is really shitty and they want that to change and so there's this like bookmobile that comes every couple of weeks and the librarian that runs the bookmobile gives them this book for witchcraft and they end up doing a couple of like basic spells the first one being to help one of the girls that has morning sickness really badly and the doctor just like doesn't believe her to kind of switch the roles just to reverse them and that was kind of fun but then it ends up digging their path down to a little bit more of a dangerous path because the witches now are like okay so you took from us now we're gonna take from you and it becomes kind of like a like a thing and it's it was just ah, the story was just really fun to follow and i really enjoyed it and i felt like it was just it was a quick read for me i was just really i just wanted more i just needed to know more i needed to know more i needed to know more I really had a good time with this one. This is definitely one of those top Grady Hendrix books for me, especially after last year's, or was it this year's? No, it was last year's, the freaking Haunted House one. What was that one? I have it. How to Sell a Haunted House. I that one was terrible about that stupid puppet. I couldn't. This is way better than that. So if you hated that book, you're gonna like this one. Um, I definitely would check trigger warnings. As a mom myself, there is a few gross things that I did skip over. I don't normally skip over paragraphs, but I did because I was like, oh, I don't like reading about that. But I did really enjoy it and I finished it this month. So I figured I'd chat about it since this is essentially my what I read in October video. We are gonna get back quickly to talking about Mr. Magic. I think I'm gonna finish Mr. Magic today. I left my book in my room, so I'm sorry. <sighs> you guys, I'm actually really enjoying it. And I was really nervous because the reviews were making me nervous. I feel like I get the slow burn. We are getting the slow burn because like I just want things to be told to us but because we're in Val's point of view and Val's perspective and she's blocked out all those memories we're learning as she's learning and I hate it. I want to know everything. I need to know why we can't trust these kids. You know what I'm saying? I need to know the story about Mr. Magic and it is creepy you guys this is gonna be the worst month of sleep of my life for me because i had insomnia last night and i kept looking out my because we keep our bedroom door open because i have kids and if they get scared you don't care i kept thinking i was seeing a little cape and i was like there's somebody out there i can't sleep at night guys i might have to pause i think i'm gonna read mr magic i already know the next book i'm gonna read and then i might have to pause and read one of my like comfort books not comfort but like easier not spooky books but we'll see after the next one because I'm like, I'm a little spooked, y'all. But I'm definitely going to be finishing Mr. Magic today. I only have like 60 pages left and then I'm so excited to start the next book. I already know which one I'm starting, but I'll tell you guys about it later. But yeah, I'm really enjoying Mr. Magic. It doesn't, as of right now, it's not giving me a five star feeling. It's definitely feeling very four star though. We'll see how the end plays out. It could be a five star, but I already think I'm going to pick up Hyde by Kirsten White too because I'm really enjoying it. So that's my update. Still October 4th. I finished Mr. Magic. Um, oh, I didn't even read any of these, any of these blurbs. Hold on, let me read some of these. First of all, it's blurbed by Melissa Albert, who I have read two books by, and I enjoyed a couple of them. One of these, I don't know this author, Mallory O'Meara. She says, it meets Stepford, the Stepford Wives, which I can see. I ultimately gave this 3.75. It was definitely going in the four star direction. And although I think the ending still could have kept it in the four star, like the ending didn't do anything that I hated. It was fine. I just ultimately decided 3.75 because there was like a lot of confusing bits at the end. And I almost feel like it was drumming up to this dramatic 
reveal, right? And I'm ready for it. I am seated, I am eyes open, I am pages flipping for this dramatic reveal. And the reveal was just very, like it was good, but it wasn't like as exciting as I had hoped it could be. I think I'm slowly developing my tastes in horror books and I'm finding that stuff that happens that's like this isn't necessarily my jam, but you don't know it till the end, unfortunately. So yeah, 3.75, I didn't hate it. I do think that I will pick up Hide by Kirsten White as well. That's the other book that she has written that I'm interested in. That one seems to be about like, it's kids are playing hide and seek in, amu in an amusement park, but more sinister forces are at work there. And that, that kind of sounds cool. And I like the, the idea of a setting in an amusement park. So probably if I ever see that in person, I'll pick it up. It's not really something I'm like itching to go by right now. But 3.75 on Mr. Magic. The cover is just absolutely to die for. And the hide cover is also great as well. So whoever does the illustrations, for Kirsten White. Kudos to you. Should say in here, shouldn't it? Let's take a peeksy poo. Oh, she's got a whole lot of series, by the way. The Sinister Summer series. See, I looked that up and I think that's like maybe middle grade. It's like Wretched Water Park, Vampiric Vacation Camp, Creepy, Menacing, Ma Menacing Manor. I think that would be cute for my kiddo. But let's see, does it say the illustration? Book designed by Simon M. Sullivan. You go, Simon M. Sullivan. This is the shit. I like this. So now that I have finished my third book in October, and it's October 4th, <laughs> I'm gonna start my next one. It's already upstairs. I don't have it to physically show you. But next, and I don't know if I'm gonna start it tonight or if I'm gonna pause, maybe start it tomorrow. But speaking of amusement parks, next on the docket is Fantastic Land. And I am stoked about it, honestly. So I'm gonna dive into that soon. So today is October 10th and I haven't updated you guys in a while because I've been back at work. I come home, I'm exhausted, but I have two things to share with you. One, I finished Fantastic Land. This was an easy, easy five star for me. I really didn't know like what my expectations were going into this. And I don't think I even updated you guys halfway through or anything like that. I had really like no expectations going into this, but this ended up being kind of everything to me i feel like if you are in a book club or you like read with friends or anything like that like buddy read this would be a perfect buddy read because i just have so much i want to discuss with people like i have so many thoughts and i feel like this would be the perfect book to do so so in this book you are following from interview perspectives after everything has happened so you know the people that are being interviewed are obviously people that survived this situation so what happens is there's this like massive hurricane that hits the coast of florida and fantastic land is kind of like you have to think like universal or disney they do mention both of those but fantastic land is like a fictional theme park that exists in the same kind of area but the person that built it wanted it to be closer to the coast which is obviously not a good idea but the setup is relatively the same like there's like a pirate's land a superhero land uh fairy prairie there's like uh kind of like a main street usa at disney where it's like a, it's called the golden road where all the shops are there's all these different sections there's even like the underground tunnels the way disney has um so things like that like all those different sections so when this hurricane is going to hit they kind of do the same thing that disney does where they have employees on like standby that stay at the park to kind of maintain but they are treated with like food and water that can be lasted up to like three weeks um there is like a generator so there is electricity but they do stay underground in the corridors so basically what happens is this big hurricane hits these like 300 and some employees are there they're mostly like i would say like late teens like I would say like 18 to like 22 is the age group for most of them. Some of them are older, like older people that work like on the construction sites and stuff, but it's mostly just young kids essentially. So they're all there and they're all in the like underground area, like the bunker essentially with all this food and stuff. And all of a sudden the power goes out and there's kind of like a little bit of a strife, but then the power comes back on and a couple people are dead and it's like weird. But then everyone's like, we should just like not be in here. Like we should be out. And when everybody kind of leaves, they kind of go to their own section of the park. So like if you worked in the pirate's land, you kind of just stayed in the pirate's land. So everybody already sectioned themselves off and it kind of becomes 
very Lord of the Flies. Like there's there's uh, raids to get certain supplies that they don't have. There's lots of killing each other. And like they kind of section themselves off and become that section. Like the pirates are like, we kill for each other. And it's very like that. So I think the interview style is the best way to tell it because it is technically first person because as you're listening to the interview style or not listening as you're reading from the interview style I say listening because it felt so real um you get each person's perspective and it kind of starts you like it builds up with like the person that created the park the person that runs the park then to like people that were actually there like the leader of the shop girls the leader of the pirates like the leader of the robots or the deadpools is what they called themselves and you get to see kind of firsthand experience of everything that was happening not necessarily day to day but like overall and not only do some people section themselves off but there's quite a few people that just kind of go out on their own they kind of just kind of brave it on their own and see what happens and that becomes a little bit spooky as well and I had such a good time reading this the discussion questions I felt like I would definitely do with a book club would be like where do you think you would have ended up realistically and then where would you have wanted to end up like realistically I think I would have ended up with the shop girls just because I'm sure that's probably where I would have worked and I'm not going to tell you where I would have wanted to end up because I feel like that kind of ruins kind of a surprise that I wasn't expecting there was also this one kind of group of people, a duo I'll say, that I loved reading about. They were the creepiest in this entire book and I feel like you need to read this book to know about this duo because I need more. I almost feel like there could 100% be a sequel and just have more interviews and more stories because they didn't really necessarily cover like these people were there for almost a whole month. I feel like they only covered like a few days and i would have loved to read more more perspectives because like i said we got perspectives of people that like ran off to like there's like one person that like ditched and tried to get into one of the hotels on property and that story was like it's just there's so many stories of so many places people could be and i think that's what's so exciting because like you're like oh they only section themselves off into the five sections or whatever no there's people that like go underground there's people that try and go to the hotels there's people that like hunker down in rides like it's just i really loved this and like i said i i would love a sequel like i'd love a second part i feel like this would be amazing as a movie but i also feel like this would be amazing as a graphic novel like a horror graphic novel because i just want to see it because the whole time i was reading it i could visualize everything and it was just this was so good i i wrote in my goodreads review that i want to delete all memories of this book just so i could reread it again from the beginning and i stand by that because you're led down so many different paths that you think are going to be wild but they end up being like so smart and i don't know i just this was an easy this was an easy five star for me like definitely one of my top books of the year this and into the drowning deep are probably my top two favorite reads so far this year like i adored this and it's so short and it's so so i could talk about this one forever but i loved fantastic land a couple of days ago after i finished that i started reading i feed her to the beast and the beast is me this is by jameson shea this is a ya horror i ugh. so i started this a couple of days ago and i guess you could argue that i have been working for a couple of days so i have been coming home exhausted but i just can't find myself getting into this so i am on chapter eight 89 pages in and i just don't care and that makes me so upset because i thought the synopsis of this was so good and it's definitely something that i adore because like it kind of centers around the paris catacombs which i love but like i said we're 90 pages in we're following our main girl lore and she is the only black ballerina in this like paris academy of ballet and so she already feels like she's a step behind. She wants to be ahead, but she is like ahead in all of her classes. And she got the starring role in like the end of the year, the end of the, I don't know, school term ballet performance. And so she is already ahead, but she just wants more. She wants more. She wants to be the best, although she is, which is why I'm like, what? So... In this, like, we just got to the part where she goes down into the Paris catacombs led by somebody to kind of give away some blood to a stream in there. And now she's going to have power, but it's like a bargain. 
and i have a couple of gripes with this book so far and i'm hoping that they like go away because it feels like so far seven eight chapters in it's the same stuff over and over but there's a lot of ballet terms in this which is fine but it just feels overwhelming for the average reader i feel like if you're going into this book like if you're writing this book you can't expect everybody to understand all of these different ballet terms like i did dance for a long time as a kid but like i only know like plie and that's about it so like all these extensive terms i don't know and i feel like we're kind of following the same pattern we're following her performing and it's like in depth her performing like twirls and stirls and it's like i don't why are we going in depth this should be like three sentences and then it's like her being upset with herself her performing her being upset with herself and it's happened like three times now and i'm just kind of over it and then i was really excited for the like introduction of the paris catacombs and again it probably will come up again like we probably will go back down in there again but it was like a paragraph <laughs> it was the shortest like i went around a church and went down some stairs and i'm in there and it's like that's it like there's no like spooky anything in there because like we all know something's going down in there and you get to this river and that's it and it's like and now we're performing again i just i just hope that's not this entire book because this is i'm 89 pages in this is a 340 page book so like can we please kind of have more just a pinch more because like this looks so and I'm such a fan of YA horror that it's like I just need this to be better and it sucks because like I'm coming off of like a few very good reads like I've read four books so far this month and I'm I've adored all four of them you know what I mean so to get into this now I'm like oh like this was one of my most anticipated and I'm just like oh. so I'm gonna go ahead and continue to slog through this I'm on part two and like that's the thing that's annoying is because like Part one was called Devotion, and like that looks spooky. Where was part two? Part one was really short. Part two is called Schism, and it's again spooky. And like I, I had the um, dust jacket off, but like that's creepy. The writing on the side is spooky. So it's like, I don't know. It does say she continues to go into the mystifying underworld below. Okay, apparently there's... I don't know. I feel like there's going to be something else that happens. And I hope so. Because I'm freaking bored. I'm bored. I want something to hook me from the start. And I have not been hooked. I have not been hooked. But I want it to get better. Because I was really anticipating this one. So. Easy five star. I don't even know what I plan on reading this quite yet. But then again, I'm not even that far into it. I'm like 25% into it. So. That's my reading update. And hopefully I come back to you in better spirits. Because... If y'all would have saw me read this, like, I was so happy. Hey, dokey, everyone. It is October 17th. I have not updated you in forever because I feed her to the beast and the beast is me. It took me way too long to read. Um, I'm done. It's been two days since I finished it. Thank God. I ended up giving it a two star. Um, I feel like you could tell that that rating was coming from my latest update. I just don't care about ballet as much as this author does and I'm so sorry. I will say it was initially going to be a one star up until I don't remember what point it was but there was a point during part two where I powered through like a hundred pages because it was really interesting but then it just got not interesting again. So in this I don't know if I explained what's happening but we're following Lore. She is I think I have one of the best ballerinas in this school and somehow she just wants to be more. She wants to be a god. Um, goes into the Paris catacombs. She's led there by a fellow friend. Gives herself to this entity and in turn is has a power becomes a powerful person but she's not the only person. There is a few others that ask of this entity um, and get things in return so she feels like she has people to relate to and it just it just didn't catch my attention the way i wanted it to this just this just was not for me there was like a cliffhanger at the end there is a second book i won't be picking it up i just this almost put me in a reading slump like i was so bored and 
that's not to say anything i think it's just the content i didn't care about the writing in this book was beautiful it was almost poetic at points the descriptions of things were so pretty and i it was there's like this it's hard to explain but there's like this world that they go to at some point that was described very beautifully i just didn't care i just didn't care it wasn't what i wanted and that's on me that's on me two stars i'm so grateful it's over now on the flip side a couple of days ago after i finished that thing i did start the last house on needless street by katriana ward actually it just got off live stream live reading sprints five minutes ago where i read another 100 pages of this but i am currently more than halfway through this book i'm on page 205 and something absolutely wild just happened so i'm still very much like in shock in a good way because i kind of predicted it but in this you have multi pov you are following from three different people you're following the point of view of ted who is this very like socially awkward dude who like holds himself up in his house doesn't really like people is a little bit mentally i would say like just behind like he just he's not all there and he's really like uneducated so it's kind of hard when you're reading from his point of view you're following from the point of view of d who is older now but when she was younger her younger sister was kidnapped who she believes ted did it and you're also following the point of view of olivia who is this cat and i thought that would be really fun upon starting this book um, the last chapter I just read was from Olivia's point of view and it was much better But all of the other chapters prior to this Olivia's weird. She's just a weird cat Like she weirdo, but honestly like go off queen, I guess Um, so yeah, this entire book you're kind of thinking Ted did something to that little girl D thinks Ted did something to that little girl. Olivia's just like trying to protect Ted She feels like it's her duty to protect him and it's a little confusing you're like breadcrumbed a few things that you're just like what does this mean like the green green boys or green something in the attic and i'm like what does that mean and you're not really given much about it but a part did just happen that i kind of predicted but it ended up being a little bit better than my prediction in my mind so i'm really enjoying it i feel like after finishing I fed her to the beast and the beast is me anything would have really sparked my interests and this has definitely been doing it i'm actually hoping so this is like 330 pages and like i said i'm on 205 i'm hoping to just finish this tonight and start something new because i'm really enjoying it so love this cover hate the cover that goodreads has but like this cover is so beautiful but I'm really enjoying this one. I feel like I'm back on my horror grind. I have three more books that I really, really want to get to. And then I have my other books that I'd like to get to. But I feel like this is going to this is gonna be done at least by tomorrow. So I'm really enjoying this so far. Thank God, honestly. <laughs> another update it is october 21st and i did finish the last house on needless street i actually finished this a few days ago but i've been so bad about updating you guys and i'm like i gotta do it today or i'm gonna forget i did just come home from a very long day of work i'm very tired and i just want to go lay down right now but i need to update you so i ended up giving this four stars this was really really good i think um as a horror novel i quite enjoyed it when you finish it it definitely doesn't feel like a horror novel it feels very sad but i really liked it once all the reveals started happening i you think you know what's happening but you totally don't so like what i was like yes yes this is exactly what i thought this is exactly what i thought yes but also no so the big there's a lot of twists in the end I definitely felt like I was flipping the pages so quickly towards the end because so much was happening and then like these big reveals happen and you're just so sad you're just you're just sad because ultimately like all of these people are just like going through it and it's just 
it's really sad i do recommend though i feel like it was a really great fun fast read um and if you're looking for a horror book that will definitely keep you guessing i would definitely recommend this one and also just like trust the process with this book especially if you start it and you're like i don't know especially with me like i did not like the cat at first at all just trust the process it gets better so this was definitely a four stars for me and now let's move on <laughs> Immediately upon finishing that last house on Needless Street, I did go ahead and start Bless Your Heart by Lindy Ryan. I wanted like the shortest book basically out of my collection because I just felt like I keep, I have like two, hardly two weeks left of the month, nine days, no, 10 days if you will. And I have like three more books I really want to get through. So like I'm just trying to power through this one and then two more hopefully. And so far, so good. I am 100 pages exactly in on chapter 13 of Bless Your Heart by Lindy Ryan. I will say this is not a horror novel at all. Yes, it is in the horror section. But this is giving me very, like, oh, I forgot my cover is ripped and that really bothers me. This is giving me very, like, Vera Wong's. <laughs> Vera Wong's, uh, what is it called? A uh, Guide, no? How to Catch a Murder or something like that? Uh, Vera Wong's Guide to Catching Murder? I don't know. Finlay Donovan, it's just like kind of a fun time. You're following this like group of females, the Evans that own this funeral parlor in this small southern Texas town. Y'all, the statements they be making, I'm like, oh, I love it so much. Like I was reading some of these to Brian last night as I was reading them. Like even in the first page, country born and cornbread raised. Oh, I love the South. Um, <laughs> I love I just love all the little references. They're so funny. But it's this small Texas town. This these women, the Evans women, there is like a matriarch and then like there's a great great grandma, a grandma, a mom, and a daughter, and they all kind of run this funeral parlor because they know that there is stuff out there and they're the only ones that can protect the town. Um so it's not necessarily vampires, it's called something else, but in my eyes it's like a zombie or they it's like ghouls. It's like a zombie vampire ghoul mix. The dead come back to life and they're the only ones in the town that can stop it. So you're following multiple POV, which I love. You're following all the perspectives from all four women, which at first I was very confused by. I was like, who the heck is even who? But then you're also following from like the sheriff and a couple people that end up dying really spookily. So like it's a good old fun time. Yes, it's a little gory and a little gruesome at times, but I feel like if you're looking for like a spooky read that's not necessarily very spooky, this might be right up your alley. So like I said, I'm 100 pages in so far. We've seen two, well, I will say one person for sure dead, two that we're not sure if the second one's dead quite yet, but I've been really enjoying following from these perspectives because like it's just kind of fun. And I feel like it's a pretty quick, easy, fun read. It's it's not hard. There's no like flowery language. It's all very just easy, simple, cut and paste. Really easy. So I'm hoping to finish this. My goal is to finish this by Wednesday because then that's two days. I think I can. I think I can. I'm here. I think I can get like two more big chunks done because I have two more books, like I said, I want to read. So I'm going to keep going with Bless Your Heart. So far, I am enjoying it. Um, but I'll give you guys more thoughts later. I'm looking to see who... Oh, we have a Nat Cassidy here. It says, if you don't think a horror novel can somehow feel like steel... If you don't think a horror novel can somehow feel like Steel Magnolias meets Buffy with a dab of Straub's ghost story, well, bless your heart. I love... Have y'all seen Steel Magnolias? Dolly Parton is so good in that movie. Uh, Rachel Harrison quoted this. Absolutely brilliant. We got a Darcy Coates gory spine chilling and deeply southern yes i don't know why this accent's coming out y'all i've lived in texas for almost 10 years i lived in north carolina forever the southern um yeah maureen kilmore oh she did write Su suburban hell i read suburban hell last year it's really good she says sparkling with magic and southern charm this is really good actually i'm quite enjoying it so i'm gonna keep going Okay, so I'm back here in the, probably the exact same position with an update, but this is like the best spot because it's like really quiet in my bedroom, so it's very nice. I've also been so bad about updating you guys, especially because I've been finishing these books on nights that I like work, and then I go to work the next day and I don't even think to update you, but today is October 27th. We are four days shy of finishing this month out. 
and I want to get through two more books and I think I can do it so I did go ahead and finish bless your heart by Lindy Ryan a few days ago I gave it a three and a half star I actually really did enjoy this I would say this is not necessarily horror it's like a cozy horror which I've never read before and I, I quite liked it did give me that Vera Wong's unsolicited advice for murderers is that the right one I think that's the name I keep forgetting the name and Finlay Donovan vibes like it definitely gives you like a cozy but still kind of fun vibe and it like obviously leans horror because you're following like these ladies that run this funeral parlor who are essentially trying to make sure the dead don't rise and I really liked it I had a good time with it I liked the multiple POVs like yes there was a lot of point of views but I feel like each one made sense for the time like you needed to be following that specific person and I really liked it and it's gonna be a series it definitely gives me like a cozy series and I do plan on picking up the next one I think the next book comes out in April potentially I think this would be a fun little cozy horror series the end of this was a little shocking um I kind of predicted one thing but then like other things started happening that were definitely like very shocking for what I felt like the plot was doing but I still liked it I liked the vibes I thought it was good if you're looking for something that's like I guess considered horror but isn't necessarily the most scary thing on the planet there is a few bits of like gore in here just because you have to remember they're running a funeral parlor and it's almost like zombies and things like zombie vampires but other than that it's really easy read really fun and I really did enjoy this so I did give this a three and a half stars I promptly moved on to my next book my camera's dying so hopefully I can get through this rather quickly the graveyard of lost children this is by katrina monroe i am 50 ish percent of the way through i'm on page 208 of this and i think out of all of the books that i have read this month so far this one is probably going to be the one that scares me or is currently scaring me the most it feels the most horror to me i follow this one instagram account and i I think it's called book skywalker or skywalker book or something and she wholeheartedly recommends like a ton of horror books and it's a lot of the times horror books that i don't see other people talking about and of the three now recommendations that i've taken from her account i've given like i think the first one was dead 11 i gave it four stars um what stalks among us i think i gave that five stars and this is definitely feeling like a four or five star read so have to continue taking recommendations from that account but yes in this we are getting two point of views we are following shannon and we are following olivia olivia is uh i guess i want to kind of say like our main person we're following because shannon's points of view are very like few and far between but olivia just gave birth to her daughter and is immediately feeling a lot of feelings and i feel like this book definitely dives into like the postpartum postpartum depression postpartum anxiety angle which i fully like feel because with my second i was like had a lot of postpartum anxiety and that has rolled over <laughs> almost six years to the day maybe so um i definitely understand that and that's why i think this is so scary to me but she feels so like she cannot like not watch her baby like her baby's asleep and everyone's like go to sleep like go to sleep she cannot sleep she is constantly watching the baby she thinks something's gonna happen to the baby and she keeps seeing this like woman with long black stringy hair and she feels like this woman is i mean she is watching her and wants to take her baby and then we're following Shannon's point of view and Shannon is Olivia's mom and Shannon is in a psychiatric ward because the exact same thing happened to her with Olivia with her daughter Olivia when she was a baby she felt like she heard these voices she saw these women and they all came from this well that was in the forest in her backyard and she like put her baby in the well and ended up going to a psychiatric ward for it because everyone was like you tried to kill your baby um but like she's like no the women like they were like stalking me and it's very interesting to see that now happening to olivia this feels very paranormal um i am really like spooked by it but i'm also really enjoying it the like women from the well and like all the little like i don't know seeing the woman with the hair and like oh my gosh it's just like some of those moments are so spooky to me like the one time olivia fell asleep because like i said she was crazy obsessed with her daughter refused to sleep she woke up and there was like a long black hair on the pillowcase next to her and that's horrifying you know what i'm saying so 
I'm really enjoying it. I'm hoping to finish it very, very soon. There is only about 350 pages, so I have 150 pages left. I would love to finish this tonight because I have one more book that I want to read before the end of October. And I'm like, I really gotta get through it, but I'm really enjoying this. I think, like I said, out of all of the books that I read this month, this is definitely the spookiest. I'll keep you updated. Apologies for this hair. It is 7.30 on a school slash work night and it is just gonna look the way it's gonna look. It is October 29th. Last night I finished Graveyard of Lost Children by Katrina Monroe. I believe in the last clip I was telling you guys how this was gearing up to be one of the scariest, one of my most favorite books of the month and I'm sadly here to report that it is a three star. Um, yeah it was it was gearing up very well i felt like the entire premise of this was super super spooky um the paranormal aspects were really scary unfortunately i felt like the author just wasn't sure how to end it and therefore the ending felt really rushed and really weird there was like, I guess, like a reveal at the end that I just kind of figured the entire time. It just made sense. I mean, to be fair though, I guess the author did kind of breadcrumb it quite, quite a bit. So I felt like you as a reader should have known anyways. But yeah, I liked it. I loved the message of like the postpartum depression and postpartum anxiety. It's like ultimately what this book felt like was that the black haired woman really was just kind of like what postpartum depression and postpartum anxiety all gear up to be is this like entity and i felt like that message was really loud and clear and i really enjoyed reading about it from kind of more of a paranormal aspect a paranormal perspective i feel like this isn't really going to hit home with anybody that maybe i don't know because i feel like any mother any person could really like resonate with this so i don't know i feel like this book is a good horror recommendation for sure i just felt like the ending just didn't land for me and that made me so sad because like i kind of wanted the ending to be way more scary than what it was but i gave it a three star and i did enjoy it and i think i will look for more books by this author because it was a decent good time so yeah i did go ahead and finish this but i will still stand by the fact that the instagram person that i follow that recommended this and the few other books is a good recommendation still because it was a great horror rec so after i finished this i did go ahead and get like 30 ish pages into my next book which is just like home So this is just like home by sarah gailey this is more than likely since it is october 29th going to be my last book of the month which puts me at nine books total which is pretty great for me honestly i think last year in october i read 10 but to be fair two of them were graphic novels so those are pretty or i think three even were graphic novels so nine's pretty solid but yeah i started just like home i really really wanted to get to this book this month this was i actually i think i explained to you guys how i had three stacks made i had like what i want to read this month hopefuls and then like it's okay if i don't get to them and i did end up reading or getting to read every single book from my i want to read stacks i'm really happy about that and this was the last one i kind of wanted to save it for last because it felt like it is horror but it also kind of gave off a little bit of thriller vibes and i thought it'd be really fun plus this cover is kind of everything so yeah i'm only i'm on chapter 4 30 pages in i'm gonna try and power through this the next few days because i really want to finish this on halloween i think that would be really fun and i don't here's the thing like i thought that reading all of this horror all month long i would be so over it and i'm planning on starting a new reading vlog in november a completely different one and i'm like kind of sad because i've been really enjoying horror i think horror is my favorite genre i've just been having a really good time with it but in this one we are following vera and vera is coming back to her childhood home after many many years and after leaving because her mother is dying and she is going to be inheriting the house and needs to like fix it up and sell it and stuff her mother is still alive when she first gets home like i said i'm 30 pages in and she's just got back to the house just saw her mom just talked to her mom just kind of peeked around the house and saw if anything was different but her house is the home of a serial killer which was her father and it's funny too because her dad actually built this house too which is cool but um 
it says she's back to face the love she had for her father and the bodies he buried there beneath the house he'd built for his family um also oh yeah that made sense so it, what makes it worse is that she and her mother aren't alone in this house her mom rents out the guest house that's in the back to like various people and currently it says it's an artist which i haven't met him yet or met them yet um they are slowly stripping Vera's childhood for spare parts. Yeah, to he. He insists that he isn't the one leaving notes around the house in her father's handwriting, but who else could it possibly be? There has been like one kind of like spooky part so far, which I really like. Like 30 pages in and we're already getting something spooky. Quite like that. She was in her um, bedroom and her dad, when he built her bed, didn't build it properly because he wanted to be able to hear if she left her room at night. So like one certain part would squeak and she was like standing like with her back against her door just kind of like deep breathing meditating and she heard the bed squeaking and nobody's in the room with her and i thought that was really good and spooky so um yeah i'm hoping to enjoy this i'm hoping this really ends the month out with a bang and like i said i feel like i'm gonna be really sad because i mean obviously i can read more horror like i don't have to stop but like it's been such a good month such a good reading month and i can't wait to wrap it up with you guys so I'm gonna keep it moving with just like home. Hi everybody, it is October 31st. Happy Halloween. We have finished the month out. I am about an hour shy of taking the kids trick or treating and I just finished Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey. I gave it a three star, ultimately. This book, I don't even know how to explain it. The first 75% of this book is a haunted house story very spooky very creepy our girl vera her dad was a serial killer he used to do stuff in the basement and her room was right above and she could hear it and he'd be like oh it's like baby raccoons don't go in the basement and she's like yeah dad sure totally um so she goes back to this house because her mom's dying she's taking it over clearing it out gonna sell it some spooky things start happening and I know I described the spooky stuff to you but it got like spookier like way spookier paranormal haunting type things and then the last bit of this book was weird you really have to like suspend your disbelief for this one and I put that in my Goodreads review too because that ending was just like I don't know like I couldn't like wrap my brain around it I almost like I don't know I'm not gonna say anything I don't want to spoil anything ultimately a three star my final book of the month i read eight books this no nine three six nine i read nine books this month go me proud of myself on that one i did want to pull up i lost my phone my story graph and just kind of go over a few stats before i end this reading vlog out i can't believe i just read oh, i read oh, i love horror so much and you would think i'd be over it but i'm like itching to go pick up another horror book you know what i'm saying that's that's my favorite genre so if we're looking at my stats on my story graph for october i read nine books this month exactly 2800 pages 2800 pages um mostly dark mysterious tense emotional there's a little sliver of funny which i think is probably bless your heart but dark mysterious tense emotional makes sense i was reading all horror books um let's see i read nine all nine horror uh four of them were considered thriller two of them were considered fantasy one was considered young adult and one was also considered a mystery and then my average rating was a 3.67 for the month i had two five stars which is so exciting with incidents around the house and fantastic land i stand so heavy behind fantastic land i loved it so much i had one four star two 3.75 one 3.5 two three stars and one two star and then if you want to see my pages read that first is insane because i read that whole book in one day i read I read a lot. I read 448 pages on the first, which is kind of crazy for me. So this was a really good reading month, honestly. I think if you're reading your favorite genre all month long, it tends to be a better reading month, but I had such a good reading month and I hope you guys enjoyed this reading vlog. Let me know if you've read any of the books in this vlog and should I do this next year? I'll probably do it even if no one comments because I'm so excited. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Go ahead and subscribe if you're not already and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye guys.